The gas fees on the Lina network are insane right now. And one of my transactions required a gas fee of 6 Ethereum, which is just super high. If you want to complete all the different tasks for the Lina Voyage campaign, I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get enough Ethereum to process all of your transactions. And this includes both a paid method and one that is free, but definitely more tedious. For this week's linear voyage, I've already done most of the tasks and I'm still waiting for three of them to be verified. So right now I already have 410 points out of the full 425 and I'm waiting for this task to be verified before I can get the maximum amount of points. To see the gas fees that I paid for all of my transactions, I spotted the data from the linear block explorer and into this excel sheet. So these are all of the transactions that I conducted for the 8th week of the linear voyage campaign. And the last column is the amount of gas that I paid for all of these transactions. So in total, I spent about 28 gold ethereum on the linear testnet to perform all of these transactions. Even though some of the transactions have a very high estimated gas fee, just by skimming through all of these transaction fees, it seems that the maximum you pay will be a lot more than 2 gold ethereum for each transaction. So it's not as bad as it seems on Metamask. This is actually good news because the transaction where I encountered the highest gas fees for is when I wanted to provide liquidity into Nubiswap, where right now it shows that it, the estimated gas fee is about 7.5 Ethereum, which is super high. However, when I actually performed this transaction in the end, the actual transaction fee that I paid was only 0.4 Ethereum, so it's actually not as bad as it seems. Right now, most of the faucets on linear only provide you with at most 0.5 gold Ethereum, so it will not be possible for you to just rely on these faucets to be able to process all of these different transactions. The main strategy now will be to get as much Ethereum on the Goli testnet and then we bridge it over to the linear testnet so that we'll be able to complete all these transactions. If you're willing to pay some real life funds to get this Goli Ethereum, then you can use this testnet bridge which was something that I covered before in my previous video on how to get Goli Ethereum. This allows you to swap your real life Ethereum into Goli Ethereum and the Ethereum that you have on the main nets can either come from Optimism, Arbitrum or Ethereum. I would strongly suggest against using your ETH tokens on the Ethereum mainnet as the gas fees are super high. And right now with the latest Bedrock upgrade, Optimism has a much lower gas fee as compared to Arbitrum so this would be the network of choice when I'm bridging my funds over. To have enough Goli Ethereum to process all of these transactions, which is roughly about 28 Ethereum, if you want to swap 0.003 worth of real life ethereum, we can already get about 33 gold ethereum which should be enough for us to process all of the transactions. So this will roughly cost about 6 USD in real life to perform this trade and it will definitely help you to save a lot of time if you are willing to spend this small amount. So after you have decided on the amount that you wish to transfer, you can then confirm the transaction in your Metamask wallet. Previously, I already performed a transaction with about 0.002 ethereum on Arbitrum and I swapped it to about 25 gold ethereum. So the rate is slowly going down as more people are starting to use this bridge and the rates may not be that favorable if you wait a while longer as more people may start to use this bridge which makes the liquidity pools unbalanced. If you want to use this strategy then you should do it ASAP. If you don't want to spend so much real life money, another way that you can get more Goyle Ethereum is by using the Coinbase faucet where it gives you 0.1 Ethereum on both the Goli testnet as well as the base testnet for every wallet that you have. However, the only problem is that you need to have about 0.002 Ethereum on the Ethereum mainnet and it costs roughly about $3 in USD to have this amount. If you already have multiple wallets that have some ETH on the Ethereum mainnet, then it's possible for you to use this faucet to claim both your Goli Ethereum which will show something like this, and 0.1 Ethereum on the base network as well. So depending on how many wallets you have, you get about 0.2 Ethereum per day, which may not be a lot, but it will definitely help to reduce the amount that you need to pay in real life. With all of this Goli Ethereum that you have on the base network, you can then go to the bridge on base and click on the withdraw tab to transfer all of this Ethereum back to the Goli testnet. Otherwise, there are also some other linear faucets that you can use as well to try and get as much Ethereum as you can, although the amount that you receive from each of them is not that much. But I'll leave a link to all of these faucets in the description below. Now that you have all of this Ethereum on the Goli testnet, the next step is to bridge it over to linear. If you try to use some of the bridges within the bridging week, I think that most of them are actually not functioning as of now. So the consensus team has created this smart contract on the Goli network where you can bridge your funds from Goli Ethereum to Linear. So I'll leave the link to this smart contract in the description as well. 
And although it does look a bit shady, I've already used it quite a bit for bridging some of my Ethereum. And I would say that it's quite safe as of now. So once you come to this page, just make sure that you are on the contracts sub bar. And then you need to click on write as proxy as well. After that, you can click on this button that connects your MetaMask wallet. And this will switch you to the Goli testnet. So now you can scroll all the way down until you, you see this send message function, which is number 13. And this gives you some options. So the first one is the amount of Goli Ethereum that you have on the testnet that you wish to bridge over to linear. For this example, I'll just bridge over one Goli Ethereum. For this field, you just need to fill up your wallet address. And the fee will be this amount, which I'll also leave in the description below. Lastly, for the core data, you just need to enter OX and you can click on the right button. The good thing is that right now the gas fees on the Goli testnet are super low. So you can just confirm that this will be the amount that you're transferring over as well as the gas fees that you're paying. If you are unsure about this bridge, then I would suggest that you just send over a small amount of Goli Ethereum first to verify that it is safe before sending over the remainder of your funds. And also, after you have confirmed this transaction, you may need to wait roughly about an hour or so before you'll be able to receive your funds on the linear testnet. Right now, it seems to be the airdrop season and there are so many projects out there that could potentially release their new token. If you're finding it hard to keep track of all of these different airdrops, I created a Notion page where I've listed down all of the different networks and projects that I'm looking to farm for an airdrop. This will include both video and text guides that will show you all of the steps that I've performed to potentially qualify for these airdrops. If you want to gain access to this site, all you need to do is to subscribe to my Substack newsletter, which I also left the link in the description below, and the link to this Notion page will be sent to you in your welcome email. Another good thing about this campaign is that this will be the final week of on-chain activities on the linear testnet, and I've personally encountered a lot of frustrations when trying to perform the transactions. So hopefully all of this gets resolved before the mainnet launch. If you're not comfortable with interacting with this smart contract, then another alternative would be the Pheasant Network, where you can also bridge your Ethereum from Goli to Linear. To use this platform, you can connect your MetaMask wallet and make sure that you have selected the testnet instead of the mainnet. And under the network, you can click on Goli and then bridge it over to Linear. So this would be another bridge that I've used so far that has worked apart from all of the other testnet bridges. And the good thing is that you only need to incur a very small fee when you are transferring the funds over. The good news is also that Linear has decided to extend their campaign for another two more days. So you have until the 6th of July to complete all of these quests. I would think that most of them are rather straightforward where you can always refer to the tutorials within the quest itself to see how to perform the task. But if you have any questions regarding how to complete any of these tasks, do let me know in the comments below. If you are pressed for time and you're not sure exactly which tasks to prioritize, I strongly recommend that you do the Izumi Finance ones first. Because in this tweet here, they mentioned that they have promised to allocate 50% of their linear token airdrop if it does happen in the future to everyone who has completed all of their quests. So by completing this quest, you'll be able to receive some eye points, which will then decide your allocation for the airdrop. I'm finally glad that this linear voyage is coming to an end after weeks of frustration. And also do let me know in the comments how your experience was throughout this entire campaign. Another ZK EVM network that could be launching their mainnet very soon is Mental. And right now, it's still in its testnet version, so all transactions are free. And check out my guide here on how to potentially qualify for this airdrop. 